It's on. It's on. Do you want to do the intro? No. Yeah. Welcome to our very first mother and daughter video of how to do makeup when age starts to set in. What I'm looking for is a professional look. Everyone, this is my mom. She has agreed to be in my video today. We're going to do a professional business appropriate look. We're going to talk about accounting things, financial things, financial, financial Maybe business taxes. things because my mom is a businesswoman. I'll do my mom's makeup. Hopefully it goes okay. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. Is it still running? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. We are going to start with primer. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, mommy? About myself? Yes. I guess I'm the mother of four daughters, Christina being number three. Yeah. I started off my career as a musician until I met my husband on a cruise ship. I decided then that that wasn't the life to lead. So went back to school or went to school to post-secondary. Kind of more focused at that point, decided I was going to become an accountant. The primary driver being that I like numbers. I had a natural knack for that. I ran our music business, so I had that business acumen sense. I think I knew it was gonna give me the flexibility I needed when I started my family. I think I need to zoom up. Oh no, don't zoom up. To... Okay, so who's your favorite daughter? Well, it depends on who I'm talking to. So I guess that would make you today. <laughs> I mean, what are your go-to makeup products? <laughs> my go-to makeup products? That you use at home. Um, She's a big fan of Clinique. I, I, yes, my, my free products. I don't, I, I, I'm not a big makeup person. Although I wear makeup every day. You do? No, you don't. <laughs> I do. Every day? Probably not doing it right, but I do. Just trying to hide the bags. The, the bags? The bags. So what do you like best about being an accountant? I, I don't think it's about being an accountant. I, I think it's um, about having the ability to know that you're um, actually having an impact on, on people's lives, helping them set their direction, making sure that they're either from an accounting point of view, that their business is successful and growing, and that they are, have the growth that they want in their revenue, but also okay. able to manage their oh. expenses. And I think on a personal tax point of view is making people um, aware of how they can maximize, again, their after-tax income and making sure that they're taking advantage of all deductions. About tax season. Tax season. Oh, that's probably when I don't wear makeup. Oh. Those are long days. And how long have you been an accountant? Since about 1995. Oh, I was two. Yeah, well, it was after your younger sister was born. I um, wrote my final exam about one week after she was born. Huh. Don't, you, don't you remember when I had all my notes spread out on the hospital bed? How would I remember that? Well, don't you remember that I asked the, my doctor to um, let me stay in the hospital one extra day? No. So I could study? <laughs> how would I... How would I remember that? You had four daughters in four years. And two days. Two days. What do you regret about that? Oh, I don't, I don't regret any part of that. I, I think it was, um, it set us up to have the perfect family life. Or okay. near perfect, there's no such thing as perfect. I think my only regret is that I missed a calendar year. Back to finance. What is the difference between an RSP and a tax-free saving account? What do millennials need to know about this? Well, they're both registered accounts and they both grow on a tax-free basis. So those are both good things. The difference is though that the, well, there's quite a few differences, but the biggest difference is that for the registered retirement savings plan, the RRSP, you get to actually deduct your contribution against your other income and that generates a tax refund or a decrease in the taxes owing. Whereas on a tax-free savings account, there's a maximum you can contribute every year. Right now it's about $6,000 on an annual basis. And you can invest in multiple different investments and whatever income you make on those also grows tax-free. So the question then often is, gets asked, should I do the RSP or should I do the tax-free savings account? And I think that depends on what your income tax bracket is. So if you're in the lower income tax brackets, your savings on your RSP contribution it's going to be at the lower end because we our tax system is based on a scale. And the more income you have, the higher taxes you pay. If you're above $200,000 in income, you're going to get your, ta your RSP savings at the highest rate, which is over 45%. Whereas if you're in the lowest tax bracket, you're probably only going to get your RSP tax savings at about 20% or possibly at 0%. So the lower your income is, 
the more it would be beneficial for you to contribute to the tax-free savings account. The other thing I like about um, for lower income individuals about the um, tax-free savings account, you can access it anytime. You don't have to pay taxes. Whereas if you um, are short on cash and something happens and you need to withdraw um, a sum of money, going to your registered retirement savings plan prior to retirement kind of defeats the purpose and you're taxed on it and that could be potentially at a higher tax bracket than you withdrew it. The nice thing about the tax-free savings account is that even if you withdraw it, you can contribute it back to that plan in the subsequent calendar year or later. Whereas in an RSP, you've lost that contribution room. Huh, I missed all that. <laughs> so, Best advice I give though is ask your tax accountant. So, money saving. We've mm. been saving all our lives. What are your biggest tips for how to save money? Don't but spend. But still living, no, but like. <laughs> but living comfortably? Yes. Well, you know what, there, there's a rule. We have a rule of thumb and that, that's called pay yourself first. And it really is a 10% rule. I always um, tell people, if you're earning $1,000, pay yourself first and take 10% of that or 100 bucks and put it into a savings account. And, and if you're very disciplined in doing that, you'd be surprised how fast that will grow and then that will enable you to um, build up this pool of savings. It can be part of your retirement plan, it can be savings towards a house or a car or a trip or some other dream that you have. Maybe it's to start a business. You really have to be disciplined about saving and, and putting it aside and doing it on a regular basis. And then I think the other way to save is to really separate your needs and your wants. We live on a society that is very materialistic and very much based on a want I want as opposed to what I actually need. And I think Christine is a classic case. What? Always wanting new clothes. Or yeah, new but clothes. like I save in other areas. Yeah, well it's important to find areas that you save in because you do need to be happy. But have it, having a nice investment um, savings, it gives you security, it gives you comfort. And I think those things are important. And it means that if there's a crisis or a shock in your life of some kind, you'll be able to financially be secure. So we're both the third child in our family. Oh, what's yeah, that's the, the hardest worst place part, to be. What's the hardest part about being the third child? There isn't. You just march to your own drummer and do your own thing. You're kind of there in the middle and... Yeah. yeah. Well, I share the middle. No, see, I was truly the middle child. It'll be cold. Last year, you won an award for a Lifetime Women in Finance. What was it called? Significant Board Contribution. That was the yeah. peak award from the Association of Women in Finance. And I was very honored to, to be the recipient of that award. It was actually the first time that the Association of Women in Finance here in Vancouver had a category which was for um, board contribution. I received that award in recognition of the work that I had done in the credit union system, sitting on the boards of Prospera Credit Union and Stabilization Central, and um, ensuring that there was a proper governance in place. People or the organizations live to the values of what it means to be a cooperative. So credit unions versus banks. Ooh, my favorite topic. Is it the same in the States as it, as it is in Canada? Yeah, because credit unions, they are cooperatives, they're member-based. They tend to be a little bit more local, uh, more community-focused, but at the same time, they provide many of the same banking products and services that the uh, the big banks provide. It's more of that caring for the individual. Um, we like to say one of our values is members first. And I think that's uh, that makes a huge difference because it's not about the bottom line. We do have to generate a profit. There's lots of regulatory uh, financial ratios that you need to maintain. But uh, it is about members first and making sure that their financial success is considered before generating profits for shareholders. So we're using the Milani Sultry, Soft and Sultry Eyeshadow Palette. It's a very business appropriate palette, I feel like. Well, not business, but uh, workplace appropriate if you're in an office. Working from home. You mm -hmm. have worked from home mm -hmm. forever. What are the pros and cons? Pros and cons, half the time I can work, wear just my sweatpants and not worry about makeup. Roll into my office, get my coffee, my breakfast, and go straight to work, not have to battle traffic. It actually saves you a lot of time not having to deal with traffic. It's good for the environment. Mm -hmm. I think working out of the home, what I, what I really like about it, and which works really well with my client base, is that they know they've got access to me at different hours, in the evenings. You have to let your clients know what the limits are as well. The reason I, I, I so passionate about the credit union system is because I do care about making a difference 
in the actual lives of my clients and adding value to them. Putting them out of their stress because a lot of things around finances and taxes where they don't have that knowledge or that understanding can create a lot of stress for them. So being available to answer their questions, I think I think is very helpful to them. You have to manage that so that they don't interfere with my family life. But the nice thing about being out of home as well, or working out of the home is the flexibility it's given me in being able to um, do the board work that I've done and to volunteer in my community as well. I, I'm not eyes. squinting, I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's those age marks. So managing and investing finances to make the most of the money you're earning. Well, you know, I, I think it's really important to find a really good financial planner, somebody that really aligns with you and your values. Most of us, if we don't work in that field, we just don't have that knowledge or that expertise or that skill set or the or the understanding of what the long-term impacts are. It's kind of like, I know how to drive a car, but if something happens, I don't have a clue what to do. And so having that trusted mechanic is really, really important because I know they're going to fix it. I think a financial planner is like that. You, you can turn to them. You have to be honest with them. Tell them what your financial needs are, what's happening. Hey, you didn't get all your eyeliner off. Oh, me. Sorry. And having that trusted financial advisor, you want them to be on your journey with you for life because you're going to go through different stages. You're going to go through that initial stage when you're just saving for that car or that house or maybe still trying to pay for the education. Maybe you're going to start your registered retirement savings plan or want to know how to invest in your tax-free savings account, and your financial plan is going to help you and advise you. When you transition, perhaps you'll get married, start a family. All those things are going to have significant impacts. So knowing when to do certain things and when not to do certain things, that's a person that you can turn to. And uh, in my profession, I'm actually a, an accountant and a financial planner. You want to have a little bit of both of those, especially a tax, uh, a tax planner, for if you're on a personal at a personal level. I bought a place, buying versus renting, and then how, if you buy, how do you pay off that mortgage? Congratulations to you, Christina, for being able <laughs> to, uh, to buy a place and to have that down payment. Maybe part of the training that I instilled in you, that discipline to make sure that you saved your money, because it is very hard to get that down payment, but it's not impossible. And then you've got the mortgage now, right? And you've got, you know what your payment is, but mortgages, they're, the ter they're usually term three to five years at different rates. And you always got to be aware of when you renew, what is that, what is, how is that going to impact your cash flow? And if interest rates go up, your payment's going to go up and that, that, that can hurt and that can cause some financial stress in your life. And then the question becomes, do you just continue to make your monthly payments or do you take advantage of that annual opportunity to make a balloon payment? You can make a lump sum payment on your mortgage. It's a certain percentage always of your original mortgage that you took out. And I would say if you've been disciplined throughout the year and continue to save money, then you should have cash set aside so you can make that balloon payment. I'm actually a big believer of making that balloon payment and it's because your personal residence, at least here in Canada, our interest is not deductible. Those rules may be a little bit different in the United States, but for the, us, those of us here in Canada, our interest is not deductible, so you're really paying your mortgage out of after-tax dollars. I think there's good debt and I think there's bad debt. A mortgage on, on a principal residence is actually good debt. But you want to pay it down in a timely manner. So putting a balloon payment down if you've got extra cash, it's a good thing. It's going to decrease your payments in the future, but it also means that instead of having a 25-year mortgage, maybe you can get it down to 20 years. And then if you need money, maybe to invest, maybe to start a business, maybe to buy a rental property or an investment property, then you can use the equity on your home, on your principal residence. You can take a mortgage out against that, and now you've made that interest deductible. So again, it's about turning loans into loans that you can actually deduct the interest on. And by that way, you will actually grow your financial wealth faster. Okay, speed round. Speed round? Yes. Favorite color? Uh, blue. Favorite place on earth? Bali. Hey, my favorite color is blue. Bali is your favorite place on earth? Yeah. Favorite animal? Ooh, do I have a favorite animal? Yeah, this is speed round. Oh, go. oh, oh, okay, horse, I don't know. Horse? <laughs> I don't know. Cats or dogs? Dogs. If you could be anywhere right now, where would you be? Bali. Okay. I just got back from Bali. I love Bali. Ocean or lake? Ocean. Warm water though. Has to be warm water. Superhero power if you could have one. Maybe superhero powers. I think influence. It, Don't ask who's your favorite daughter. I, <laughs> favorite tree. Favorite plant. Favorite uh, flower. Favorite uh, tree is going to be an evergreen. And, and you know, favorite flower, I'm going to say sunflower. I like calla lilies personally. Favorite holiday. Favorite holiday? Bali. No, mommy. Like A season? Yes. Oh, I love Christmas. Of course. That looks good, I think. We're basically done. 
I can't think of any more questions, but if you guys have any more financial questions for my mom, you can leave them in the comments and I'll make sure I get answers. Did you make your balloon payment, Christina? No. Oh dear. So that wraps up this video. I hope you guys liked my mom's makeup. Would you wear this if you worked not from home? Absolutely. You would? With my business suit? Yeah. Okay. I'd love it. I'm not a makeup artist, so I don't know how to do makeup on um, aged, aged skin. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow my mom, I can leave them up here too. Oh yeah, follow ah. me. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Oh god, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Alright, we're done. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, let me let me look here before you